Los Angeles, the whole country in fact, was in a state of shock when Charles Manson and his tribe of young drifters and flower children brutally slaughtered nine innocent people, including a beautiful young actress, Sharon Tate, and her unborn baby. It was the sickest, the most outrageous murder spree of the 1960s. The nation was relieved when they were finally given the death penalty, but now, 23 years later, these vicious killers are up for parole once again. Is it possible? Could they actually get released? Today, we will hear from the one woman who's crusading to keep them behind bars. Sharon Tate's little sister, Patty, talks right here next on The Mari Povich Show. They were all members of the same family, a sick, cult-like family that went on a killing spree in Los Angeles in 1969. They shot, stabbed, and bludgeoned nine people to death, committing one of the most heinous crimes in history. They are the Manson clan, so named after their notorious leader, Charles Manson. I have this war axe. And their horrific crimes continue to haunt us to this day. Sharon Tate was a beautiful 26-year-old movie star who was stabbed 16 times by this woman, Susan Atkins. Sharon was eight and a half months pregnant at the time and begged Susan to spare her baby's life. She said that she, Susan Atkins, held Sharon's arms behind her back and that Sharon was crying and begging and pleading, please don't kill me, please don't kill me. I don't want to die, I want to live. I want to have my baby, I want to have my baby. But nothing, it seems, would have deterred Manson and his fellow devil worshippers from carrying out their monstrous mission, a mission no one has been allowed to forget. For the last 23 years, we've been faced with disturbing reminders of the summer of 69, as each of these infamous inmates comes up for parole. Thus far, they've all been denied their shot at freedom, but there's always the terrifying prospect that one day Manson and his maniacal followers could be set free. Peace on Earth. Patty was only a child when her older sister, actor Sharon Tate, was brutally stabbed 16 times by members of the notorious Charles Manson family. What were you told about, about Sharon's death? Um, and the day that we found out about it, we found out through people calling us saying that they had heard little blurbs on the news. Um, we had been trying to call her all morning that morning, and the phone line would just uh, ring, ring, and ring, and ring, which was very unusual. We knew something was wrong. Um, part, we thought, well, maybe she's gone to the hospital and having her baby, um, because she wasn't one to get up in the morning and just head out for breakfast or something, and she was only like, two weeks away from having her child. Um, and then we found out that something had happened, but didn't have any details. But the way we found out was through uh, friends calling us. Um, my father was in San Francisco, and it was only my mother and my sister and myself. And um, my, it was uh, an awful day. And my mom collapsed in a doorway when we found out that um, there were no survivors. Your at the memories house. are still sharp, even though you were what, 10, 11 years old. I was 11, going on 12. Yeah, my memories of that day I can remember perfectly. The days thereafter. Um, or a uh, uh, blur to yeah. me. When was the last time you remember talking to your sister? I think it was the day before um, she was murdered. We had been there all day, and it was a very hot August night and um, or uh, August day, and we had spent the time swimming in the pool. And she'd often lay down, and take naps, and um, I'd sit and. By the hour, you know, she'd let me hang on to her belly to try to, you know, I could feel the baby moving and putting my ear up there. I was very excited about being an aunt. And and I um, we had been apart from my sister for quite some time because she had been in England living. And uh, we had only been, including her, <clears throat> had only been home for about two weeks. Did you ever go to the house? Oh, afterwards? yeah. Oh, afterwards, no. No. Did you ever see the crime scene? Yes. Uh, well, pictures. 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 It was terrible. It was... It was the most horrific crime scene in 
in terms of pictures I've ever seen. I mean, I've been to a lot, yeah. but just the pictures of them. Absolutely. The, um, when the day that, and I, I saw them not too long ago, and, and my mother never did see them. She, I didn't know that. And I'm glad she didn't because um, those pictures will never leave your memory. When you see them, they are so awful. How do you, I, I knew your mom. Yeah. Um, for many years, on on, the, on this level and this level only. I mean, oh. I have never known a, a person who was so dedicated to keeping those people in jail than your mother. I mean, I I was amazed. I, I used to think to myself, you know, maybe she should just let go. Maybe maybe there's. But she felt that this was her duty. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, not just for herself, but for other victims. Um, when she became involved um, with other victims, it, it, was, uh, it was her life. Uh, she drove herself so hard and, uh, of course, everything that we do, um, we don't always um, do just for our own case, you know, although except for going to the parole hearings and this type of thing. But we can make it better for other people that are going through. But why are you picking up the torch? Well, um, and, that, and you seem, I mean, you seem a very private person. You yeah, You don't yeah. want part of, you don't, I'm sure you would rather not be in this position. Well, I'd rather not. I'd rather my sister was alive and that um, I wasn't connected with those people in any way. But however I am, and... Does this mean you're going to go before every parole hearing? Um, not every. I, I don't, I will not go to Manson's. Why not? Oh, he's, um, it, it just, I, I, I couldn't handle it. Did your mom? No. You couldn't handle it in terms of the feelings that you would have, or you couldn't handle it because uh, you see so much of the horror that, that, that he led? Absolutely. It, uh, scared to death of him. Scared to death of all of them, actually, to tell you the truth. It's, uh, it was so hard. Um, Susan Atkins' parole hearing was my first, yeah, and um, about that. oh gosh, it went for four hours, and uh, I was um, I broke down. I mean, I had to. I was. I got hysterical for a second. I had to put my hand over my mouth because I started crying so hard because of um, my collective fears over. A good part of my life, you know, these people have been my nightmare since I've been a child. This is um, not a story. For a lot of people, it's been a story they've heard over and over. This is my reality that has um, nightmares growing up and um, just broken my family to pieces. And, and my mother, to sit and watch a mother or a father go through a, a needless loss of their child is the most terrible thing that could ever happen. I would, I would have done anything to be able to help my mother's and father's pain. But you, but as a sibling, you can't make up for that. I mean, you do. You want to make up for that piece of them that they've lost, and you, um, you can't. You can just be there to love them, and yeah. especially the way it was played out so publicly. Yes. Yeah. And such a horrific crime. Absolutely. And and the pictures still, I think, lodge in the memory of anyone old enough to have remembered the summer of 1969. Yeah. When we come back, we are going to meet the man who's determined, along with Pat, Patty, to keep the Manson family behind bars after this. <laughs> not by my own hand kill any human being. I was there. I participated. I did nothing to stop what was going on. It is inexcusable behavior. It is something that I live with every day. That was Susan Atkins at her parole hearing a little over a month ago. You take a look at that now. You were there, Patty, when it happened. I mean, how... What does it make you feel like when you hear her denying that she ever did Make anything to your sister? It makes me mad. It's so infuriating to sit. I mean, 
She murdered my sister and, and Tex Watson in the worst way a per I don't understand how people could ever even do such a thing to another person. Stabbed 16 times. 16 times, cut her face, hung her before she died. She had rope burns on her neck. And, uh, and with a belly here out here. She is here. denying it. She yeah. was convicted of the crime and she's denying it. And that's why I'm going to fight so hard. That's why my mother fought so hard. Your, uh, your mom passed away uh, recent, last year? Pardon me? Your mom passed away last yes, year? Yes, she just died last July, last this year. summer. Yeah, she had now, a brain tumor. Now then, we all believe in justice. Deborah Frazier is Susan Atkins' attorney. She believes her client has paid for her sins. <coughs> Los Angeles County Prosecutor Stephen Kay is leading the battle to keep Manson, Susan, and the others behind bars. Three other Manson murderers are up for parole later this year. So that, uh, let's get something straight right away, Stephen. They were given the death penalty. They were given the death penalty, what, 23 years ago? What happened? Well, the liberal California Supreme well, Court... I'm not getting into politics. <laughs> the facts 19... are that the law changed. In 1972, held the death penalty unconstitutional, and there were 115 uh, inmates on death row at that time. They all had their sentence commuted from death to life. And under the law of California at that time, that meant they were eligible for parole in seven years. And so these parole hearings started back in uh, 1978. Now, even though there's a death penalty back in the state of California, it does not affect them. Right. We, okay. we can't go back and, and give it to them because the death penalty that was in effect when they committed these murders was held unconstitutional. We all believe in due process, Deborah. You're the lawyer. You have right. a client. Mm -hmm. By the way, did you pick her or did she pick you? No, I was appointed to represent her in 1988 by the Board of Prison Terms. Every prisoner who is up for a life parole hearing or has a parole revocation hearing is entitled to an attorney. And the Board of Prison Terms, I was on their list and they picked me. So you were appointed her? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I, and I know that seems so ridiculous yeah, to sure a lot does. of people. It sure I, does. But see, I talk to her all the time. I write her, I, she, I take her phone calls, I go and see her. I, you know, I deal with her and have been with her since 1988. She's had a choice of attorneys. We stuck together because I believe that Susan has progressed to, she's really rehabilitated. Now, whether or not, now I know it's, it's because, all, wow. because nobody else talks to her, sees her, watches her work. Susan doesn't sit in jail with, you know, and not do anything. Susan is very actively involved with the victims' groups, with mm -hmm. prisoners, and uh, AANA, and there's a lot of things she does. Yeah. How can you say that? I mean, I'm behind you all the way, Patty, about keeping these people in jail, but she killed these people. How can you let them out? How do you know she's not going to kill other people? What constitutes rehabilitation? I mean, you have to take a good, hard look at that. At, first of all, I, I, from what I have seen and all the research I have done, I have a belief that Susan did not kill Sharon. But that's my personal belief. Who and did, that by is the something, way? All Tex Watson. Tex Watson. Absolutely. And Tex Watson uh, killed the other people, too? Absolutely. Okay. He's Tex got... Watson killed everybody. He didn't, wasn't by himself, that's for sure. None of the women, the house. none of the flower children women were involved in oh, at no, the Patricia actual... Patricia Krenwinkel was involved yeah. at the Tate House and um, Leslie Van Houten, to a lesser degree, even at the LaBianca House. But not your client. Am I not going to tell you that my client didn't participate? Well, my client wasn't sitting out in the car with Linda Kasabian. She was in the house. She didn't do one thing to stop this. She didn't do one thing Except to help that Except she held woman. my sister down and she yeah. held while down. she was stabbed. Let, let, let me uh, correct a, a false impression here. These people are not flower children. They hated hippies. Uh, and I, I know the historians say that uh, these are hippies, these are flower children. They referred to themselves as slippies because they said they were going to slip under the awareness of society, that society would think that they were peace-loving hippies. These people who followed uh, Manson, most hippies saw Manson and turned the other way and hightailed it. Charles Manson was talking about 
how Adolf Hitler was his hero for what he did to the Jewish people in World War II. And he would not let minorities in the family. And he would tell different people in the family who could get together and have babies uh, together because he wanted the babies to look a certain way. And you have to understand, Susan Atkins was one of these people that stayed with him and responded to this. It's such a myth. What? That's it's what? such a myth. There is so much myth that is surrounding this case, you can't distinguish fact from fiction. There was the myth that then they why, were all sexually was, mutilated why, why or was, that Sharon's baby why, was cut out. Why and was Susan Atkins with Charles Manson? She was one Under of... Under a spell? You know, it's, it's a spell, an influence. You know, when you have nothing, you don't think of yourself as anything. It is very easy to fall into uh, with people who are... Manson's a charming man. Manson's a very... No, not in the sense... Stop. Wait, wait, wait. Not in the sense of being a charmer. He's a charmer. Yeah. He's very manipulative. He's a con. This is a man who's why, been in prison it, since why, he was six if he's years so manipulative, old. If he's so manipulative, why aren't any of these people taken yeah. out? Well, Maury, you know what Susan Atkins did when she met Manson? She was a topless go-go dancer on North Beach in San Francisco. Okay, yeah. I used to live in North Beach. It's not a bad name. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, I, I'm Dawn Lund from East Brunswick, New Jersey, and I remember this very well because we were going to California in 1970 to live, and I know that I remember this so vividly, and I just thought, I don't know if this is a place I want to go, realizing California is very big, of course, but um, my feeling, and I feel, give people a second chance, but when it's a heinous crime, and there are people where there's a judge and a jury that say, without a reasonable doubt, these people did this crime, I'm for the death penalty, I'm afraid to say. We'll be back with a man who spent his days with Charles Manson and a man who married Susan Atkins after this message. Thursday. I have to use my voodoo stick again. He's back. Well, this must really be interesting. I'd be willing to bet the chicken ranch on it. How about that, Ross? We'll all be plucking chickens for a living. It's your decision. You think about it. It's Ross Perot, Thursday. Yeah. You wanted to ask something? Yes. You say she was convicted of killing right. Sharon. Mm -hmm. Was she observed plunging the knife into How Sharon? How about that, Mr. Prosecutor? She confessed uh, to that to several different uh, people, and uh, she said that uh, when it happened that she was holding Sharon's uh, arms behind her and that Sharon was begging and pleading for her life, said, please Do don't kill me, difference? I want to live, I just want to have my baby. And Susan said she looked in her eyes and said, and pardon my language, this is a quote, Look, bitch, I don't care about you. I don't care whether you're going to have a baby. You're going to die, and I don't feel a thing about it. Ridiculous. And then she said she stabbed Sharon until Sharon stopped screaming. Who, who said that she did this? Sharon's dead, obviously. She Susan Atkins said that. Herself. Susan confessed. Atkins confessed yes. to this. She, con she confessed to that. She confessed why, to Why are you no. saying no, Deborah? Because in her grand... It's a prosecutor who's oh, saying in, this. Because in her grand jury testimony, no. that is not what she said. Did she say in it at the trial? In her grand jury testimony... Now, you stop and think about it. You're holding somebody's hands behind them, and how do you stab them when you're holding their hands behind them? So you stop and think about that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a struggling woman. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Deborah, I have a question for you. You referred to Charles Manson as a charming person. Charmer. Has he conned you also? No, no, no. I, I don't want you to misunderstand. Charming. I don't want you to misunderstand the word charming. It's not in the, the, the social acceptable connotation. It's charming in the sense of a charmer, a manipulator, very smooth. Have you, been, have you, have you been in his company? <laughs> oh, no, I have not, thank God. But I've seen, but what's up? I have seen him right. in enough tapes. He looks and appears bizarre. All of you would think he's crazy, he's insane. He's not. 
He's not. He's and Stephen would agree with me on this. He's real good at what he All does. Right. He's our next guest. He our is. next guest was a corrections officer at Folsom Prison. One of Steve's job was to guard Charlie Manson. He was also act. He's also actively uh, involved in working with crime victims. And Don was briefly married to Susan Atkins. Ah, we'll hear about Charlie Manson in a second. Why would you marry Susan Atkins? It happened. Oh, well, now wait. <laughs> Why would she marry him? Now wait a minute. <laughs> it just, uh, just doesn't happen. Well, I knew her before she met Charles Manson. Can you, when you heard about everything that happened to her with Manson, could you believe that she would be involved in something like this? Well, let's say it didn't really surprise me. It didn't surprise you? No. And yet, afterwards, when she was incarcerated, you ended up with her and marrying her? I don't think I'd want to be around a woman like that. Well, this is 15 years later that we got married. Well, what did you think? That she got better? <laughs> no, I, I was trying to help her. Why would you want to help her? You feel sorry for her? Well, at the time, the situation was different, but over the years, I've learned better that she's... Strictly a cold-blooded killer. That's exactly what she is. Okay. Well, let's say... Let me ask you this. What was she like around the time that you married her? Well, I won't go into detail. She was a very warm person at the time I married her. And she was still in jail. Let's get this... Let's get the, the facts correct. straight here. Let's, let's all understand where we are here. She's in jail. You come to visit her? Right. And then what? You, well, you... when I came, we got married. Wait a second. That's another thing that infuriates me, that um, I, I, I'm working hard on, uh, on, on victims' issues and the conjugal visitations. This is a whole nother ball of wax. Right. Tex Watson uh, got married in 1979 to a woman he didn't even know. He's got three And he's kids. got three Obviously. children. Yet he and Susan Atkins didn't allow my sister to carry on with her marriage or have her baby. He gets to come and tuck his kids in bed in the prison. And the wife and the kids, just like a normal family, everything that he denied my sister. And Susan Atkins, as I understand it, second marriage. Af after di marrying and divorcing you, and how long? No, I divorced her. How long, how long after you got married? <laughs> well, you better get your facts straight. You're a pro bono lawyer, but you should get your facts yeah, straight. Right. <laughs> The marriage lasted how long, Don? Three months. Approximately a year. A year. Right. Uh, got divorced, and then she goes and remarries somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. Who visits her regularly, mm -hmm. as I understand. That was about five years Do you know later. this husband, Deborah? Yes, I do. What do you think of him? Very nice man. What do you think of this fellow? Yes. This is <laughs> Why? Oh, it's a lot. Well, you know, he's a fabricator. Right. He's another, another well, manipulator. Listen to this. I mean, how many times have you been married? Fifty? Forty-five. <laughs> yeah. how, Don, how many times have you been married? Forty-five. No, how many times have you really been married? Forty-five. You've been married forty-five times? That's correct. That's my case. I, 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 I feel tired just hearing the number. I will. <laughs> How many times how many times have you been married to people in prison? Once. What did Susan Atkins do to you? What did she do to me? Yeah, physically. Oh. On the fourth day at the prison during the honeymoon, I got stabbed. Oh yeah. By Susan Atkins. I never brought this to the attention of the authorities all this time. In fact, we covered it up because I didn't want to hurt her chances at parole. Susan Atkins doesn't admit this, does she, Deborah? Oh, no. Mm. I mean, that's like absurd. Okay. Yeah. You know. It that's would hurt. Yeah. If she admitted it, it would hurt her chances oh, for parole, you know, it, wouldn't it? It's so ridiculous, it's beyond belief. Yeah. Yeah. It's beyond belief. Let's go back to Charlie Manson. So, Steve, you saw Charlie Manson a lot, didn't you? Yes, I did. And Susan Atkins? Uh, I've only seen Susan when I visited uh, California Institution for Women in front. Well, you heard, Deborah, what she said about Charlie and being manipulative. You've heard, <coughs> you've heard others talk about Charles Manson. We see the images. Let's pause, let's come back, and let's find out what Charles Manson was really like after this. I was told to get a set of dark clothes and a knife 
and to go with Tex Watson and do whatever Tex Watson said to do, and that's what I did. And did you have a... Did you... I had a sick feeling. See? The powers of the serpent that live inside all that is true on the line of infinity. Infinity speaks in all life through the voice of the lost child. Is that an actor? I mean, is that is that the, the the consummate actor, Charlie Manson, or is that what he's like? Some call him the devil. He and his followers viciously killing nine innocent people in the summer of 1969. Uh, back then, Susan Atkins said that she killed Sharon Tate. Today, she says she didn't do it. Uh, what about Charlie Manson, Steve Fournier? Well, I'll go Deborah's bail to the extent that, that Charlie is a... a a charismatic character in, in a manipulative way, not in any plus way. Uh, he, what you've seen on the videotape here, the portrayal of Manson is, is the act that he puts on for the media, the act that he puts on for the board of prison terms. And, uh, because why? He knows he's never going to get out? Well, I don't know that he knows that he's never going to get out. I think he's resigned himself to that fact. And he's, if he got out, it would surprise him. Uh, he's a very manipulative person still, but at the same time that I'll go Deborah's bail on that, so is her client Susan Atkins, is very manipulative and knows how to use the correctional system to her advantage. Uh, this is what Susan Atkins uh, said at the parole hearing, Patty, especially I'd like for you to watch this. She says she can understand no, what suffering cannot. you went through. No, no, I don't think Let's anyone... Let's take a look cry because that's what I feel. Sometimes I cry because I'm frustrated because I don't know how to articulate what's in my heart. Sometimes I cry because I see this woman sitting over here in tears and I know that her mother's anguish and I know that her anguish are because of actions that I did and I feel that. I feel it every day. What do you think of that? Huh. Uh, she doesn't know. Uh, how bad it hurts and how long it never heals over never never it's this gaping wound that's in every member of my family and uh, every emotion goes through you you know um, for what they did to my sister and Jay and Gibby and Wojtek and um, the anger that the, the needless act that that, that they did um, and it hurts and it goes on and on and on. It'll, it went through my mother's lifetime. Now she's passed on. Now it's going to go through my lifetime. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I know as uh, her attorney, you have to say you believe her, whether it's pro bono okay. or you are being paid. It really doesn't matter. Yes, I can't see how you would believe it. But uh, there's a lot of people that they send out that are so-called rehabilitated, and they're still out there killing and raping and robbing and doing all the things that they were originally <laughs> sent to jail for. Well, have Why to, should she get out? Well, let's take a look at the, at most people who are in, mur in for murder in California. The recidivist rate for murder in California is less than 1%. Okay, that's, that is true. That is less than 1%, but we are talking about robbery, burglary, those are other crimes of theft uh, and property crimes. Those are very different than the taking of a human life. But, but the let's, thing look, is, at why, let's wait, look at why, I, why they're in there. They're in there because, because they, they tried took, to start a race war and to destroy society. They were going to try was, and blame these murders on blacks and get whites to start killing you know, blacks. That's been the theory. Another, it's been the theory all along that that's the been the prosecutor's theory. That's how they killed her. That's the reality. That's what yeah. happened. That's absurd. I wanted to ask uh, Don if, while married to Susan, did she ever verbally admit to you that she committed the crime? Yes, she did. What did she say? 1981. She specifically stated that she wanted to get this thing off of her chest to someone, and since I was her husband at the time, she would tell me that she stabbed yeah. Sharon Tate. Yeah. Uh, I want to know is how could you let somebody like that let go and uh, leave and let her live a life when she took somebody else's and a baby? Okay, I'm not... Uh, look, there's a point in rehabilitation. Rehabilitation is that process by which you become aware, conscious of what it is that you've done. And there is that process of repentance. In the California prison system, even if the Board of Prison Terms were to determine that Susan was rehabilitated and suitable for parole, it does not necessarily mean she walks out the door Monday morning. What it means is, is that now is your time of punishment. 
In California, for every murder that you commit, you get seven years extra. So we're looking at a woman who's in custody for eight murders. Eight times seven is 56. She may have to do an additional 56 years. Yeah. We'll be back. We'll have your question when we come back. We'll be back after this. So she's annoying you? <laughs> You're sitting there moving around You're in your to seat. Talking Deborah, right? Yes. The attorney. Yeah. Moving your seat, rolling your eyes at everything. Why? What? What's wrong with that? Because she feels that everyone's lying. What makes you believe that this sick woman that sit there and held another woman down who's pregnant, okay, knowing what it feels like because she is a woman, how is she not lying to you? Maybe she's manipula manipulating you. <laughs> Sorry. Well, that's. Oh, that's. You know, I can. I understand where you're coming from, and um. If I was all, if I was the only person that had ever talked or spoke with with Susan at length, I I question myself: Am I being drawn in? But I had brought I brought a girlfriend of mine with me, who is a bodybuilder, because that's what Susan does. In the they they talk. She's I a bodybuilder in prison. Yeah, Susan. Well, she works out. She works out. She started the weight training group for the women in prison, and she she's a personal trainer and she trains them. I mean, you can't sit around all day. You got to get some exercise, and that's what she does. My girlfriend was a professional, so I brought her one afternoon to meet her. And my girlfriend walked away from that and said, "Very nice, very warm and considerate, very insightful woman. Yeah. Somebody who spent a lot of time thinking about what she did." Let me ask Where you, I've at. known Susan Atkins since 1970, and I think she's a fraud. Three parole hearings ago, she was sobbing about how sorry she was. The hearing ended, and she went into the next room, and <coughs> with Kleenex in her hand, she started swearing at the prison not, guard because he not, didn't have the lunch true. for her. We're not, not, we're not talking about Tex Watson. We haven't even mentioned him, or Va Leslie Van Houten, or uh, Krenwinkel, yeah, or... Uh, Manson, Bruce Davis, Bruce, Bobby Beausoleil. Yeah. What about their parole hearings? Yeah. Don't they have parole hearings? They're all coming Sure, up. they all yeah, have they parole all hearings. I, for the five and you're going to go to all of them? I've been Patty, to 45. All of them except Manson. No, I, no, actually, I am not allowed because I'm only allowed to go to the ones that participate in the actual murder of my sister. Okay. That um, I guess I would be allowed to go to Manson's, but I'm not. Yep. Um, so I'll go to Atkins and Watson, and I think that's... That's, about that's all it. I'm I'm all I'll, I'll be attending yeah. all of them. You will? Yes, I will. Because you are so committed to this, Steve? Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, because of uh, Patty's mother, uh, we've formed a, a victim's organization in California to do just this job. Let me ask you, though, Patty, here's what I don't understand. You're the only member of a family that was touched by this heinous crime to, that is determined and bound to see this through. I don't see any LaBianca family members. No. Mm -hmm. I don't see any of the other people who yeah. were involved, uh, who were victims in that house, family They're members. They're afraid. Well, I think these, that, are, that, these are dangerous answer. people. To this day, they are dangerous You're the people. only one. My mother was, uh, you know, my mother was so driven um, that, uh, uh, almost too driven, actually, speaking from um, uh, the other daughter. I, I, yeah. But she had a fight, not only for the justice, and what well, it was for um, my sister. You know, uh, you know, no matter what we do, we can't bring my sister back, but we can. Does it make it get look involved. bad, though, Steve? You ask, you ask it. She's the only one. Yes, her her mom was the first one in the state of California. Uh, from a victim's family Does member it, to go, and I was the first prosecutor. If I'm on a parole, if I'm on a parole board, do I ask that question? Why aren't there members of the families of other nobody victims? Has, nobody, nobody has asked that question. I have talked to uh, other people, and uh, you know, I can't get anybody else. Is to it come. true that parole boards are, for the most part, sympathetic to women who commit crimes, and then maybe after a long period of time? They have a better chance of rehabilitation than 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 a man. Not that that's a experience. that's a problem. Yes, that I, I think that they uh, are more sympathetic to uh, it's women. Not, more no, it's not been my experience. I've no. been representing prisoners at CIW, and and in fact, I think that there's a 
in a sense, there's almost a bias. It's like, you know, you're a woman. How the, he you know, how could you be in prison? I mean, in a sense, there's a there's a bias. But getting back to your original question, Frykowski doesn't have a family here. The Folger family considers this a scandal, and so they they just as soon cut that off. Um, and I don't know. I think what are you doing here, Don? What is it? <laughs> what is it? The LaBianca family, I, I think. Is what are you doing this for? Well, you know, I was almost a victim of her myself the fourth day into the honeymoon of the prison. She stabbed me. I got a scar here to prove it. Oh, yeah. You're going to do the LBJ yeah. thing? Yeah. Maury? Maury, doesn't it bother anybody that he's telling you about a honeymoon? There's six and a half place? inches she done to me. Yeah. Right. Doesn't yeah. it bother you? Why'd she stab you? A rib deflected is the only thing that saved me. Why did she stab you? Who knows? She just knows? all of a sudden stabbed you in some rage? Right. Apparently jealous. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> she, also, she also gave me a briefing of how she stabbed Sharon Tate. That's right. Like the knife of like this, like, like that. Yeah. That's right. I don't know if I believe you either. You can believe it. Maury. I, the difference is, I was there. Maury, it does, it, has anybody picked up on the fact that this man had a honeymoon in a state prison? How about that? How about I mean, that? This is a woman yeah, who... How was... many of you have cable TV? Do you, do you all pay for it? Come to California, be an inmate, we'll give it to you for free. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't know what the law was back then, but now at eight and a half months, you could charge her with um, both murders for the, for the unborn child and Sharon Tate. I was wondering if she was charged, and if she wasn't, why not? Well, because at the time of the murders, that wasn't against the law in California. The law has been changed, and, and the, Sharon's baby was eight, she, was eight and a half months along and was perfectly formed, would have been a completely normal so you can't uh, baby. charge you can't charge anybody w retroactively with no. a crime like that. No. Now, this is Mike McGovern, who... Uh, Covered the trial, right? Yes. Uh, you've heard Deborah talk about Charles Manson and his spellbinding a a attitude and, and personality. True? That was certainly true. Uh, and uh, he, I mean, he had hundreds of people following him, uh, doing what, at his bidding. Uh, he, he did it a lot. And Why? still does have Why? people following him. He still has him. a following. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He has yes. quite a following. It's fan mail. Uh -huh. he's, become, sure. he's become the focal point of satanic worshippers in the United oh, yeah. States Well, now. you know, I mean, I've had people on here, you know, who want to marry serial co killers and things like that. I mean, for some reason, that's, you know, part of the American fabric for some reason, <laughs> or human nature. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we have to accept them just because they have these followers. But were you mesmerized by him? No, I mean, there was a... I, mean, I, was, I talked to him in prison. Yeah, there was a thick screen between us. He passed notes, poetry saying how misunderstood he was, nobody knew what, his, what he really wanted to do. And what did he say he really wanted to do? Come down to, off the mountain. Be a rock star. Yeah. Be a rock star. Yeah, yeah I think That's he right. did want to be a rock star. Yeah, he, he did. did. That's yeah. why he picked uh, Sharon Tate's uh, house, because Terry Melcher, Doris Day's son, uh, used to live there. Uh, and he was he, in the music business. Right? And he, yeah. yeah, Manson wanted to get a recording contract from him, and he wouldn't give him a recording contract. And then Melcher moved out, and Manson knew he moved out. He knew some famous people moved in there, and he wanted to send a message uh, to Melcher and his girlfriend, Candace Bergen, that therefore the grace of God uh, go you. Which is a more plausible theory as to why the murder went down than Helter Skelter. No, that's why the, the place was picked. Why the murder went down was uh, they wanted to start this uh, race war. So tell me what's going to happen now. Patty, you're going to continue to go to the hearing? <coughs> Tex Watson, he's coming up, isn't he? Yes, yeah. he's coming up real soon. You want to talk yeah. about smooth, yeah. Tex Watson. When we come back, we're going to find out what happened to Susan Atkins after her last parole board hearing and what the parole board... Uh, finally decided and what the future is for these Man Manson family members after this. If you would like to join Maury in the studio audience, then call or write for free tickets. It's the Maury Povich Show, 221 West 26th Street, New York, New York, 10001, or call 212-989-3622. Interested in knowing what are Roman Polanski's views on this? Yeah, why don't we ever hear about that? Well, he got into some trouble, and he's not around to talk to. Uh, um, Has the family ever been in touch with him? 
Yes, yeah, we have. Um, it, it's not easy to get in touch with him. I, I had to try to find him, <clears throat> excuse me, when my mother passed away. Is he glad what your mother did all these years? Yeah, I believe he is. Um, although I really don't know what his viewpoints are. I almost feel like he, he's a little bit like the rest, like the Folgers. And, um, at, he's out the family of the members picture. of the other victims. Yeah, he's kind of out of the picture. Uh, Let me ask, uh, before we close, the schedule here. Stephen, bring us up to date. Tex Watson, the yes. man who is, according to many, the man who actually did most of the stabbing. Right, he was the main killer. He comes up uh, for uh, uh, his 12th parole hearing in May. And, and, and Patty, you will be there. Pat, Patty will be there. Then Fred Winkle comes up in uh, uh, November for her uh, uh, ninth hearing, and Van Houten will have her 10th hearing in December. The parole board, when Susan Atkins came up, it decided what? Three years. Three more years before she can come up for parole yeah, before again. before they'll consider her. And you her. consider that a victory. Absolutely. Why? Because she could have been um, subject to a five-year denial. Could have been five years before mm -hmm. she would come up before. <coughs> so do you consider it a victory that she's in jail for another three at least? I uh, know. No, I think it should have been longer than three years. I think three years is too short. I thank you very much for joining us today. It's 1969. And I'll tell you, when I think of this last hour, I think of it as yesterday. I thank you so much for joining us. And maybe we should think of it as yesterday rather than uh, 23 years ago. Thank it you so much. It seems like yesterday yeah. to me. Yes, I'm sure it does. Thank you there for being with us, everyone. We'll see you uh, next time, America.